Hello. Today I want to talk to you about discount rates, in specific discount rates for real estate. This is a common question I get when I teach classes. People always want to know where do discount rates come from, what's a good way to calculate them, that sort of thing. So basically there are two ways you can do it. The first way, the traditional way, is the bottom-up approach. It's the way that's most favored by PhDs in finance. They basically say, well, you take your base rate, a risk-free rate, if you will, basically like what's the rate of government bonds in your particular country? And then you say, if that's the rate for the government bonds, let's add on premiums for everything that could go wrong. And there are a lot of premiums, a lot of different risks, but you know, for example, uh, legislative risk, like there could be a change in government, uh, liquidity risk, like once you own it, you can't own something else, business risk, like your tenants might go bad, management risk, like you might be a bad manager, lots of different things. So you say, here's my base rate, my risk-free rate, and let me add on some premiums. Legislative, liquidity, business risk, management risk, and then you've got a total rate. The problem is not figuring out what the base rate is, but what about all the other rates? Take, for example, the first chunk, legislative risk. Most people would agree the people who are politically left of center tend to favor rent control systems versus people who are, say, right of center. But then the question comes up, like, okay, so what kind of premium do we give for a conservative in office versus a liberal in office? What about a left-leaning conservative? What about a right-leaning liberal? What about if one party controls one arm of government and another party controls another? You see the problem. Figuring out what those premiums are, it's all fine and good to say, People who favor government intervention add risk to something because of rent control, let's say, but figuring out how much that risk is, this much, this much, this much, eh, who knows? That's the bottom-up approach. The second way of doing it would be more of a top-down or looking at your neighbor approach. Basically, someone says, well, I want to make an aid because my neighbor wants to make an aid and my other neighbor wants to make an aid. The problem is that then basically we're judging our investment not only if we think it's a good thing, but does he want an aid and does she want an aid? Well, what if they don't know what they're talking about? What if they're foolish? Or what if they're smarter than me? Who knows? How do we figure out what rate we should use? Both approaches have real problems. And then there's the final issue on this, which is all fine and good to say he wants an aid and she wants an aid, so I should want an aid. But that assumes the investment performs whether or not I own it, or she owns it, or he owns it. What if I'm not a good manager? What about the impact of that? How do I calculate management risk? How do I figure out, are they better at this than I am? I don't know. How do I factor in expertise? I mean, in theory, the better you are at managing the risk, the lower of a discount rate you would take on, basically. Um, when you put all this together, it's kind of hard to get at. So essentially, two approaches. Bottom up, top down, or if you will, looking at your neighbors. Um, the bottom up, it's almost impossible to figure out what the premiums are. The top down, you're looking at your neighbors. Real estate by its nature, a lot of private data sets, a lot of privately held assets, not a lot of good public data. At the end of the day, it's probably half art and half science. It's half real data that you can wrap your hands around, and a half looking at the oldest person in the room and say, hey, what do you think? You've been doing this longer, so I trust your intuition more than mine. And there you go. Uh, for this and other videos and also Excel spreadsheets, you can check out my website at www.kahrrealestate.com. Again, this is Josh Carr. Thanks.